I am Kelsey Ewell. I am the project manager for the NEON Biorepository that's located at Arizona State University. Um, and a uh, quick overview of what I want to talk about is just uh, what the biorepository is, what biodiversity occurrence records are, because that's the kind of data that we work with, um, with the um, biorepository that is, um, you know, overlapping, but not the same as the type of uh, ecological data you would find in the main NEON data portal. Show our biorepository portal and how you would find or download samples. Um, really quickly, uh, just bring up how you can access our samples and acknowledge biorepository samples and publish your own data through the biorepository portal, which is unique. Um, the main NEON portal uh, does not um, typically pull in um, data from external researchers in the way that we can. So it's a more unique way to get um, some visibility for your own research within an official NEON data portal, which I think is particularly cool. And then kind of a demo slash scavenger hunt where um, I will actually use the portal to go find um, a couple of different things like a typical user might do. So first, um, uh, we all probably know what NEON is. Um, of course, there are these 81 terrestrial and freshwater sites. Um, and the main thing I want to say about them is that um, in addition to all of the amazing data that NEON is taking, they are also collecting samples at all of those sites. And we at the NEON Biorepository consider ourselves um, like a turntable that pulls in NEON samples and data and then um, provides them out again to researchers to um, do novel things with NEON samples um, that then um, come back to the NEON biorepository portal and further um, you know, enrich the, um, the ecological data community. Um, so we operate using FAIR principles. So um, in, in keeping with NEON's main data portal, we are also you know, concerned with the findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability of data. So that's something um, we just always keep in mind um, as, as we are working with uh, biorepository data and samples. We have the same kind of outlook for um, the samples themselves physically as well as the data. So as I said, uh, physical samples are collected at the NEON field sites. They go, um, are brought into the NEON domain facilities. Then they might either go to um, external contractors who do all sorts of interesting like um, genetic or genomic or biogeochemical um, analyses on them, or they'll go directly to the biorepository. Pretty much all samples end up um, being curated at the NEON biorepository at ASU. We then publish the sample associated data on the NEON biorepository data portal, which is um, connected to but separate from the main NEON data portal. We then push our um, data, our organismal sample associated data out to the Global Biodiversity Information Facility. Um, so this is important because it is what makes um, NEON sample data uh, fully integrated into the overall biodiversity occurrence record um, data that is available globally and interoperable with that data. So I'll talk about how we do that a bit more in a moment. Um, and then, of course, we give um, the data and the samples to researchers. So they um, come to us or receive a shipment in, of samples in the mail, um, or they uh, get the data from our data portal, and then they turn that into research that then um, we uh, share and give additional visibility to through our portal. So we get a variety of different samples every year, um, about uh, uh, 80 to 100 plus uh, thousand samples um, each year. They um, have 
a wide taxonomic spread. Some of them look like typical natural history collections, specimens like a Presterbarium voucher or a pinned insect. And then some are quite different. They might be environmental samples like dried soils. They might be a bulk community sample like the bycatch from Neon's pitfall trapping or um, actually 65-ish percent of the neon samples are cryo samples. So they are um, either whole organisms or tissues or microbial samples that um, are frozen uh, according to the best practices for um, making their data potential um, uh, available in the long term. We currently have over 421,000 samples that um, represent over 3,400 identified taxa. Of course, we have these bulk samples that um, have a lot of unlocked uh, diversity within them as well. So um, there's more taxonomic spread in our collections than can be represented by the names that you'll see attached to an individual sample in the portal. So we um, trade in biodiversity occurrence records in the um, natural history collections community. These, um, these data uh, follow Darwin core standards. Um, which is a standard that is developed and voted on by the Biodiversity Information Standards um, Group, or TEDWIG. Um, it means that all of the records associated with NEON samples have um, are following this stable, straightforward, and flexible framework for compiling biodiversity data from a variety of different sources. So NEON data associated with um, a collecting event in the field might will look really different depending on the protocol that it comes from, but we translate all of that at the sample level into these um, well-defined fields that really represent, you know, taxonomically, what is this thing, um, who identified it as that, where and when was it collected, um, if when relevant, um, you know, what life stage was it? What was its reproductive condition, the habitat that it lives in? But all of those are kind of um, standardized across all of the different collections that we publish. The Neon Biorepository Data Portal is a Symbiota software-based collections portal. This is a really commonly used um, uh, software for managing and publishing um, biodiversity occurrence records. And it's an aggregator that brings in data um, often from different sources and then um, allows collections managers to both manage it within the portal and then um, it's published out to the community. Um, I just want to point out that Symbiota, um, there are many of these portals and they will represent different uh, taxonomic groups or um, locations or research projects associated with samples and biodiversity records. And so pretty much everything I'm going to talk about with using the Neon Biorepository um, data portal would apply to how you would interact with any Symbiota portal. So. This is a broad uh, data skill to be learning. Um, this is what uh, an example of what a um, full record that you might see in the portal would look like. And just those, those kinds of Darwin core fields that I brought up um, earlier are all um, present there. And this is yeah what it will look like when you pull up a record on the site, but then you can also download the data in the standardized version for many, many samples or specimens at once. So how you use um, the portal. I'll go really quickly through this because we'll actually um, demo it later on. So the portal looks like this, like I've already shown, this is the homepage for it. Uh, the primary way that someone might want to use the portal is through this um, sample search option in the menu. You'll see then a what we call a search form that has a bunch of different criteria that you can use to then filter 
the search results. So if you just went to the sample search and then said, click that search button on the right, you would get every single um, sample that uh, we actually have at the biorepository in those results. But then of course you can filter that in a bunch of different ways before you get your search results. Um, all of these menus um, or criteria in the portal um, are in these accordion menus, so you can open or close those um, uh, depending upon what criteria you're interested in looking for. Um, and then whatever you are searching for will show up as chips on the side there. Um, as criteria, and you can, you know, X out of those if um, you don't want that criteria anymore, et cetera. So when you are, um, you know, the, the first often most common way that um, someone might want to filter results is by the actual taxon. Um, when you start uh, typing into the taxon box, the um, uh, suggestions will show up. And so you know that if you're clicking on one of those suggestions, you're actually um, choosing a taxon that is indexed in our taxonomic thesaurus. So this prevents spelling errors, which is really nice um, for, uh, yeah, searching for complicated scientific names. And it will also have common names when those are available. And just going back real fast, I want to um, point out that here in this example, we have algae, which is not an actual, um, you know, evolutionary taxon. It's, um, but it is uh, like an ecological type of pseudo taxon. And we do have those available in the NEON biorepository to match the types of ecological collections and ecological data products that NEON um, collects. Um, and so that's kind of unique to this portal. There are three different types of collections in our portal. Um, the first is the NEON collections that are actually at the biorepository. Then there are additional NEON collections. Um, some of these are legacy uh, collections from before the biorepository existed or um, or something like uh, the um, like the soil mega pits that were collected at the beginning of the neon project are not located at ASU and so those are something you can also find in the portal um, but they're in these additional NEON collection section. And then there's other collections from NEON sites. So this is where we've actually um, pulled in these interoperable data sets from other biodiversity portals, but it's for samples and specimens that were actually collected at NEON localities prior to the existence of NEON. So this um, is a way that you can kind of look at uh, baseline diversity that's been studied at NEON um, in the past. So um, this is a, you know, a collapsible menu that you can open to look at these different collections and you can filter them by taxonomic group. Um, the neon theme that the collections are associated with or the sample type, this is typically um, like how the sample is preserved or um, if it's a DNA sample um, versus um, preserved in fluid, et cetera. So you can, um, you know, again, expand or collapse these options and select collections you're interested in. If you click on any of the links um, for those collections, you'll be taken to the collection description page. This is really useful. It gives a summary of what's in the collection, photos of example samples in that collection, links to the NEON protocols and the associated NEON data products, and also a link out to that global biodiversity information facility portal and all of the different publications that have um, actually used those samples, uh, the data associated with those samples in their work. So yeah, again, the collections that you select will be um, represented in the chips and under criteria on the right-hand side of that form. Um, you can filter the samples in other ways, like if they have genetic data or images. 
Um, and then we have a menu for locality. Uh, and this is where you can search by neon domain or neon site. You can click on any of those links and you'll be brought to the actual um, neon site description page. There's also um, geographic criteria where you can draw a bounding box in a map or um, uh, actually type in latitudes and longitudes to search for samples geographically. So once you cl click uh, search, then you will get the results. Um, and these will be presented in a long list um, like this. You can also look at them, the basic data in table view. And then of course you can download that data and you'll have two options, a Symbiota native or a Darwin core native. So Darwin core is that, um, that uh, data standard that I talked about before, Symbiota Native follows that um, data standard, but then also adds some additional fields. Um, and then, uh, right, that's what that says. And then when you download the data, um, if you choose to download the full zip file, you will get um, this, uh, this folder you can open that will then have a number of CSV files in it. Um, most often you'll be interested in this one that's called occurrences. That's where you have a single row in um, your spreadsheet for each sample or specimen. But you could uh, have um, downloaded just that occurrences file or um, one of these other files, like one that uh, represents just the images for these samples. And then um, there is the option there to copy the URL um, for the exact search that you did. Um, and this is useful if you want to make the exact search based on all of the criteria again, or send these search results um, to to someone else. Um, as you see, there's these three tabs at the top of this list. Um, we're looking at the occurrence records one here. You can also look at a species list that lists all of the taxa that were included in the search. And then there's also the maps tab where you can actually plot all of these samples on Google Maps or um, download a KML file. Really quickly, just um, I want to um, really plug that these samples are available for use um, and for many different purposes, even consumptively or destructively. Um, we do you know, sometimes reach out to the technical working group for approval to make sure that we aren't um, depleting the spatiotemporal and taxonomic uh, diversity of the collection too much, um, but they're meant to be used very frequently. And so um, we approve most things as long as uh, researchers agree to share um, after uh, publication of the sample associated data for use by the rest of the research community. And you can find on our portal um, the sample use policies and ways to acknowledge and cite us in your publications. And there is a form that you can fill out um, to request samples or also um, you know, I recommend just reaching out directly uh, to biorepo at asu.edu. And if you're in the process of um, preparing a proposal that would use NEON samples, you would typically need a letter of support from us and please reach out as early as possible in the process of that proposal of preparation. Um, we'll provide those letters as quickly as we can, but sometimes we do need to um, reach out uh, to the technical working group to make sure we can approve destructive uses. Um, and I want to note that um, there can be a cost if there is an especially large request or one that um, requires us to do a lot of special handling or processing of the samples. So that's another thing we'll need to um, evaluate um, 
uh, for uh, in, in any research proposal um, situation. So another reason to reach out. Um, and you can also always come to Arizona State to look at and work on the samples. Uh, like I said before, a really cool thing is that we do actually publish the value added data collected by researchers on our site. There, um, we publish these as public data sets on the site. Um, so there is information about publications, and those are linked to the sample record. So the publication is available directly within the sample record. And then we also have this page for each paper um, that will have the paper abstract and links out to the paper, as well as links to all of the samples that were used in it. So it's a way that we hope um, you can get um, additional visibility for your work. And then we um, can also publish those data sets out to um, the Environmental Data Initiative portal for you as well. Um, I want to quickly acknowledge the team that works at the biorepository. We have collection managers, biodiversity informaticians, and sample preparators um, who work really hard to make all of this available. And so with that, um, I want to actually just move to using the portal. Um, so I am going to stop sharing this page and actually go to the portal. Um, and you cannot now see what I said that I wanted to find um, because I'm going to actually go to the portal. But the first one I wrote as wanting to find is a description of the neon soil microbe sampling protocols and links um, related to the neon data products um, for soil microbes. And so um, how I would do that is I would go to our portal and I'll just point out that our portal homepage also has uh, those nice um, uh, summary statistics that are always kept up to date, and you can actually um, click on these as links. And then there, that was a very easy way to see every single environmental sample that we have. So those would be like soils and um, aquatic sediments, um, et cetera. Um, but uh, if I want to find those soil microbe protocols, um, what I would do is go to find the soil microbes. So what I did here again was I went to um, the sample search form under search. Um, I wanted to expand the list of available neon collections. I am interested in microbes, so I expanded the microbes option. And then I'm going to go to the description page for um, one of these soil microbe collections. So here, um, there's two different soil microbe associated collections. We have the bulk frozen soils samples, um, and then we also have DNA extracts from soils. So I'll just go, for example, to the bulk soil microbe collection. Here you can see a description of what these samples are, then pictures of what samples look like. This is different um, uh, housing types that NEON has used over the years. Um, back in the early years, they used these whirl packs, but now they're um, in these nicer uh, vials. But um, Scrolling down, um, you can see here we have a link out to the sampling protocol document for these samples, as well as links out to some of the NEON data products that are um, associated with the samples. So you could cross-reference sample IDs or sample barcodes um, found in our portal with uh, associated data records in the NEON data products. 
So the second thing on my list to find was all Paramiscus leucopus voucher specimens. So that is uh, the white-footed mouse um, and how I would find all of our Paramiscus leucopus vouchers is I would again go to this sample search form and I would find Paramiscus leucopus and again um, the search form has helped me not spell that wrong because it's available in the drop down menu. Um, and here's an interesting thing to consider. We have this include synonyms um, check mark. And so if I uncheck that, that I will only get um, the samples or specimens that are associated with this name verbatim. If I include synonyms, then I will get um, any other taxonomic names that are determined to be the same. So if the, the taxon name has changed over time because the, um, the group has been revised, then um, those samples or specimens will come up as well. Or um, also um, sometimes we'll get um, samples from Neon where they have um, got this mouse in the field and it is not possible to distinguish these two species in the field based on the external morphological characters that this particular individual had. So um, the NEON field staff will indicate that it may be one of two species and they will do that in this way. And if we include synonyms, then we'll make sure to get um, samples associated with either one of these names. So we won't miss potential Paramiscus leucopus um, just because there was some uncertainty in the ID. Um, so we want all Paramiscus leucopus. I'm going to include synonyms because I do want them all. Um, and then we want vouchers only. So like I said, um, this is a mouse. So we're gonna go to vertebrates and I am going to click on all of the available um, mammal voucher collections. So we get mammal vouchers that come um, as incidental mortalities from NEON's small mammal um, capturing protocol. We'll get those from outside of standard sampling. So this is um, if uh, a mortality is found outside of typical protocols that is also archived for research. And then um, occasionally a small mammal will fall into the um, pitfall traps that are put out for beetle sampling. And we also prepare and archive those um, individuals. So I'm going to look across all three collections here. Um, and yeah, I wanted them all. So I am going to do that search. We have 75 of these vouchers. You can see in some of these cases, we have these ones where um, these are from the ground beetle um, sampling where they are this um, uncertain ID. And then we have um, basically the rest of them. The ID is certain. If we went to the species list, we would see this, these two different options. Um, and so I want to look, because I also put on my scavenger hunt that you can't see anymore. Um, what, uh, how do I find the determination history for an individual? So we now know that this one is Paramiscus leucopus. Did the field technician know that originally, or is that something that um, has been found out later? And so here we can go to the full record details. Oh, you probably can't see this because this came up in a new window. Um, I'm sorry, I will bring that over. Okay. Um, here we have that individual and um, it 
we can see the full details for this individual. And um, we can see that um, it is determined as paramiscus leucopus. Um, it was determined here by Laura Steger, who actually works at the biorepository. And she has given this reference where she has, um, after the specimen came to the biorepository, she has actually um, followed the protocol in this paper um, to um, actually genotype this specimen. So we can see the identification history and here um, it actually was um, also determined to be paramiscus leucopus um, based on uh, the fieldwork as well as the, um, the sequence in bold. So this one we are very sure of, um, but we may not have had that certainty um, for some of these specimens. Well, I've, I've found two good ones, but often there is this um, field uncertainty um, that then um, may later be corrected and uh, the new um, identification information can be found in the biorepository portal. Um, and I also want to point out that you can see here in the records like this that um, we also have material samples associated with the specimen. So here, um, this specimen was prepared by Laura Steger at the biorepository and um, not only do we have the study skin for the specimen, but we also have um, a number of different um, tissues or organs that have been um, pulled out of that specimen and frozen and are also available for research. Okay, um, the next thing I wanted to, I put in the, um, the scavenger hunt is how to find a list of specimens that were used in a recent publication that is documenting viral diversity in rodents. So I mentioned before that um, we create public data sets associated with publications that use NEON biorepository samples. So we can find that here in the research data sets and special collections page. And we're looking for viral diversity. So there is this 2023 paper that I've found in this list um, that uh, actually studied um, viral diversity and used a few of our uh, neon mammal vouchers like those I just showed um, in the previous search. And here is um, an abstract for that paper, the link out to the paper, and then we can actually um, see the three voucher specimens that were used in this paper. Um, and when we look at one of those specimens, we can see that that reference is associated with it. And um, this reference will also um, be published in the data download for these specimens. And just as a reminder, it is this download button kind of in the top right hand corner of the search results that is what allows you to um, actually download that specimen data and those biodiversity occurrence records, um, as well as other um, files like the image records and the determination history um, is also available in a separate file, um, as well as the list of all of those, what we call material samples, like those organs and tissues associated with the vouchers. The next, next um, 
thing on my uh, scavenger hunt was all DNA samples associated with organisms collected at the CPER um, or Central Plains Experimental Range NEON site. So um, again, we would go do a sample search. Um, we would want to find all DNA samples. So we could go through and um, you know, select only our, our DNA extract collections um, like this, but there's a much more efficient way to do that, of course, which is um, to go over to sample type and just select all DNA samples. And so you'll see that these are either um, typical DNA extracts or they are pathogen extracts. Um, so there's a different protocol that's used and those samples are used for pathogen testing, but they are essentially um, a genomic extract as well. So we will select all of those. And then um, the easiest way to find all of the um, CPER samples would be to go um, search by locality. You could go find them um, in a map or um, put in the latitude and longitude if you knew it. Um, I certainly don't know that for CPER, so I am going to actually um, find the individual site, I do happen to know that it is located in D10 Central Plains, um, which is easy for this one because this is called the Central Plains Experimental Range, but um, uh, you might have to search through if you wanted to select it like this. Um, it is also quite nice that the um, Neon Bio Repository search form does allow you to search in the locality field by site code. So we could also put CPER right in the locality, but either one will work in this case. So as you see in the chips over here, we have everything that is a DNA sample and CPER site, and that's the filtering that we're doing. We've got um, 1,454 of these samples. Um, again, we could look at all of the um, record details for these um, and we could download the data. We could map the data. We could see our species list here. And so we have a lot of species represented here um, across uh, mammals and mosquitoes and beetles. Um, there are also microbial DNA extracts that would be included in this search result, but they do not have a defined taxon, of course, because they're um, a bulk um, sample. So they won't show up in the tax account, but they are here in um, our uh, in our search results overall list. And then the last thing I wanted to do is um, another search, um, but this time I am asking the, uh, what the number of unique taxa within the Asteraceae family is collected at um, neon sites in the Western continental US. And you might be able to see how you would do that already um, using the search form but I thought I would not want to miss out on at least showing what the map search would look like, um, where you could do this same sort of search. So this brings up um, a Google map view um, of the whole world, um, but we want to filter it and let's say we want this uh, Western half of the continental US. Of course, my, um, my prompt here is not an exact thing, but we'll say that this is the Western US. We want all Asteraceae. So this is the sunflower family of plants. Um, 
And then let's search for that. So these are all of the um, sunflower uh, family uh, samples that were collected by Neon in the Western continental US. And if we want to see those taxa um, uh, in the map search, we can go over to this taxa list tab. So there are 325 different taxa um, that meet these criteria that were collected by NEON and are available in the NEON biorepository data portal. And um, in the same way as with the regular sample search, you can um, download all of these records directly from the map search. So that's just um, an alternative way of searching for NEON samples using our data portal. Um, so that was what I had um, to share today. And I'm really um, happy to answer any questions about how to use our portal or how to access samples, um, whatever folks might be interested in. Um, yeah.